All right, we are live. How exciting. Hi, Ben. Hey, hey Jenna. How are you? I am peachy. Hey, I'm excited everyone. for this Monday. How are you? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I was, I was reading through the comments as we were just getting started, and I saw Michael Brady. First comment was, feels like Friday. And I kind of feel like it does, <laughs> you know? It does absolutely feel like Friday. It's um like a holiday. We get to talk about five exciting whiskeys today. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, and first of all, we should say welcome to well, welcome everybody for, for and thanks for joining us. This is probably I don't know we're going to be a little giddy, I think, on this one relative to others. We've been doing how many of these streams have we done now? We've done a few. Um, yeah, this is like our sixth, maybe. I know. Maybe. I, I, I I think we were both a little nervous the first time. You know, we're with, practically with, experts at this point. <laughs> well, I don't know that we're <laughs> experts, um, but uh, at least we're we're. Up to stuff on the whiskey, so yeah. So what? So I guess welcome everybody. Yeah. What, what do we have in store today? Um, so this is our May outturn preview tasting, which is exciting for lots of reasons. One, it's an outturn preview tasting, meaning we have some amazing new whiskeys coming out um, tomorrow. But this is also our largest outturn to date. I mean, we have twenty casts coming out tomorrow. Like that's crazy. Um, yeah, so today we're going to go over a small handful of those just to give everyone kind of a sneak peek of what to expect tomorrow. And, uh, you know, our members over this past, you know, month, two months have, you know, been so supportive and just been so incredible on their, their own, you know, exploration into whiskey. And so we're, we brought in the big guns this time and we've, we've stacked up a pretty awesome outturn for the month of May. So we're going to talk about a few of those, which I'm excited because I haven't tasted any of these yet. I saved it for today because I wanted to feel surprised and I wanted to be excited. And I am. Can you tell? <laughs> a little bit. A little I'm bit. so excited. This is going to be such a fun month for us and obviously for our members um, because we have some pretty stellar stuff that is coming out tomorrow. So I hope everyone gets good sleep tonight and can really prepare for tomorrow because it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. There's gonna be lines <laughs> of people sitting on their couches. I can't wait, to click I know. Buttons and call us, yeah. I wanna be, I wanna be one of those people like, you know, I'm just gonna like, you know, tell you guys I can't work right now. Like I gotta be logged in. I, I wanna experience it myself just because I don't think I've ever been this stoked for and now turn like I'm just super stoked about this. Is any can any is anyone else out there as excited as I am? Ben, do you share in my excitement? <laughs> well, well, yeah, it, it's uh, it's been long anticipated. So you know, I think for everybody watching live, you know that we're currently confined to our homes in this unique era of the, the coronavirus pandemic, uh, which means it's another day of a real shirt on top and sweatpants on the bottom. Um, I got dressed so, today. <laughs> let's, just, let's, be, let's, let's call it as it is. Uh, but it's also been fun. You know, it's, it's been a crazy couple months now because, uh, you know, what, we've been so isolated in, in yeah. many ways, you know, from each other and not, yeah, not physically seeing people, but I think YouTube here, you know, yeah. our society has been amazing at connecting us and finding we've members have found new ways I'm really kind of going beyond our club just i think whiskey lovers across the internet have just found ways to connect and share drams so absolutely and it, ways, it feels like more you feel more yeah was, exactly you feel a little more connected um which isn't a bad thing i think you know if that's the silver lining here and we can take a, a deeper level of connection out of this i think that is is really amazing and so, you know, times are tough right now, but you know, our members and these moments bring so much joy, at least to me, like I'm, I'm so happy to just be here on a Monday with, you know, 144 people out there and you to talk about these whiskeys. I think that is amazing. So yeah, and it's a, thank you all for that. Yeah. I just ch ch check who's in real quick, you know, as we're, as we're getting going, I've got all the whiskeys lined up here. Um, and I, we should probably start by saying, well, we, the, we have a pretty stacked here. cast here today. Yeah. So um, to kind of cruise through and say hi to everyone, um, we have Michael Brady, who is already on Friday. So, you know, I'm on board with that. We have Tim Blosser looking forward to this. So am I. Um, let's see. So we have Tom Smith is here. The Tom Smith, the one and only Tom Smith. So if you have any questions um, throughout this, I'm sure he'll be, 
you know, kind of chiming in and answering some of those questions. And, you know, he knows everything. So if you have any questions, you know, that Ben and I can't answer, um, the Tom Smith would be able to, to definitely answer those for you. Um, we have Ernie here. Hi, Ernie. Um, we have, let's see, Karen's here from DC. I talked to a few members in DC actually Ooh, today. So. I love it. Karen, Karen, you've been, I think joining, and not just to call it Karen, Karen, you've been joining all of these streams. We appreciate having you. Yeah. And I know somebody, I've seen so many familiar names as well. I know. And it's actually been nice too, because, um, some of the names that we see here in the chat, I end up talking to some of you all on the phone and it's so nice you know, to be able to kind of have that level of connection too with you guys, because it's it's hard sometimes, you know, just through a chat. So please keep calling us and talking to us because we love it. <laughs> um, Zach's here, our colleague out in, in Florida. Matthew J. Ryan's here, the Tar King himself. Matthew J. Ryan, Matthew J. Ryan a member in New York who loves Pete. And will we have any Pete for you today, Matthew? Well, it remains to be seen. Um, I think Jenna would like us to have some as well. You can almost guarantee that if I'm involved, I will force Ben to to make sure there's a peated whiskey in there. Oh, for, yeah, force <laughs> in my hand, like it's like it's a. <laughs> it's all up to Ben. <laughs> so, all right, who else is we have? Gosh, there's so many people. Hi, the dummies are here. Scotch test dummies. Hi, guys. We have whiskey Papa in the house. Let's see if. One, been drinking since Friday. Monday will be just like another Friday. Okay. The days are all kind of blurring together. So we have Cody from Hawaii. Nice. It's only 11 o'clock in Hawaii. Not about yeah. today. All right. Good morning, Cody. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Monday morning drams. I hope you are hope you have a dram in front of you, Cody. So I have, I have some drinks that I'm ready to kind of dig into. So um, I see some of the questions in there are asking what time the outturn is being released tomorrow. Okay. So, so I, yeah, I think, I mean, today, look guys, the purpose of this little chat is to, well, it's twofold. One, you know, we're going to, we're going to release, well, we're going to unveil, I think a selection of whiskeys coming out to the outturn tomorrow, which as Jenna mentioned, is going to be our biggest ever. Um, and just, and I think the other thing is also, we have a whole new look starting tomorrow. Yes, we, we do. Updated our entire bottle designs. And we'll be in, uh, showing those in just a moment. You know, obviously, we, we'll be tasting through some of them. So everything coming out in the U.S. for members in the U.S. from the Scotchman Whiskey Society will be bottled in the new bottle design, which so far people who have seen it, I think over in the U.K., they released just a couple months ago, have, have loved it. And I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, tomorrow is the outturn day and it's 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time is the release date. And so I guess we should probably address the fact that, you know, yeah. yes, this is our biggest outturn tomorrow. Why is it our biggest outturn? Uh, well, I think on one hand, you know, the society has been growing. More and more members have been joining us here in the States. Uh, but the other thing is, of course, as more of us are at home enjoying the whiskey, uh, we've seen growing interest. And I think as, as some people have pointed out in the comments, I've noticed this too. You've noticed that some of the whiskeys that we've been releasing in our outturns have been selling out within minutes at times. And it's a bit unusual times right now as, as you know, and we certainly appreciate the enthusiasm, but we also know that the interest is, is because it is so high, and everybody's really looking to whiskey exploration as a nice little home activity to get through the quarantine. Uh, we've decided to front load tw as many as 20 different casts coming out tomorrow. Um, so we'll, we won't be tasting all 20. <laughs> much, I think that, that we could save that for another sort of marathon, uh, but we have handpicked a selection that I think represent a good diversity of different flavor profiles and, and styles um, from the 20. And then of course, uh, will we'll be available. Our team will be available, including Jen and I, tomorrow to, to talk through it, the other whiskeys as well. So. Yes. I think we should save the 20 for the next 12 hours of boom um, <laughs> over on the Scotch Test Dummies. <laughs> that, is a, that is a feat. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know what I've had. I think uh, we had last year at our gathering, the gathering, if, if you guys, if any of you guys joined the gathering, we hosted our celebratory events in five cities across the states uh, for members here. And we had... 20 whiskeys at, at every gathering. And I know some people fun. like to taste all 20. Well, you were you were there. I was, I was there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so uh, I, I have not yet done that, but well, maybe we'll have to 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 work on that. So all right, Ben. So so uh, let's go ahead. So we so Jen and I are gonna yeah, talk through a selection, taste through a selection. And as Jenna mentioned, you haven't tasted any of these, right? Nope. I, I had one and a half. And I mean one and a half because I tasted one because I just, these came in and I had to open it right away. Yeah. Uh, there's one I of the nine. I know which one that was. 
we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know that you, well, I'm interested in, you know, uh, if you do know, there's a, okay. And then another one, I kind of have, I just call it a half because I was in a, in a hurry and I was also excited for that one. And I didn't have a chance to really properly sit down and enjoy it. It was just sort of a taste and run. So you kind of set the mood before, the like we talked about, you know, couldn't get the, the right glassware. You got to get the, the environment right. You got to get that whole thing right before you can sit down and really dig into these. So I've done yeah. my best here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good reference for our Art of Taste and Whiskey Stream. Thanks for everybody who joined that. That was uh, coming up about a week and a half ago now. That's fun. I learned a lot from that. Yeah. we Jen and I and our colleague Zach broke down sort of different methodologies for tasting, getting the most out of the whiskeys. Um, I've sort of tried to adopt that here with the environment, as you called out, and the right glassware. Uh, but it's a uh, well, it's 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 always funny doing these on YouTube because there's it's I don't know I find that it's it's coming easier and easier, but with everybody watching you taste and the pr the pressure of the situation, ah, whatever, screw it. <laughs> All right, All right. You ready for this? I'm ready. You go into it. Yeah, I know you're ready. You're ready to report. Okay, so guys, so first up, here's the bottle. Let me just show this here. Oh so, yeah, the big reveal okay. here. Uh, I, I sense that the light's probably pretty bright. Is that pretty washed out? Yeah. Um, difference number one, Jenna, and do you have a the old bottle? I mean, I see you have a bunch behind you. Maybe we can show for reference. So here's a picture of, actually not a picture, just here's the current bottle, the new one coming out tomorrow. <laughs> can we get them to match up? Along with Jenna's old one. So new, oh, I can't point to your screen. No, <laughs> Other so, way. <laughs> so first, first key difference here that we you can just see, first of all, the bottle shape is the same. The bottle is actually the same as it yeah. is, same green, same shape, same size, same dimensions. Uh, I think the most obvious thing you'll see right here is, <laughs> thank you, uh, <laughs> is the, the logo here. So all of our bottles have the new monogram. And you might actually recognize this monogram. Well, it's a logo on our website and all of our social channels, including this YouTube channel. So just look below, I guess, at this point <laughs> if you want to see it. But uh, difference in the monogram you can see here. It has the building, which is the vaults, which is our headquarters and spiritual home in Leith, outside of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, so the new monogram is is essentially placed homage to the vaults and our heritage as a club. And then this sort of interwoven ivy and uh, S, S, M, I'm sure there's an SMWS. I'm looking backwards through the camera here, but uh, oh yeah, there it is. SMWS interwoven with ivy. Just It just speaks to the connectivity and unity of really what's become this global whiskey club, you know, of all different cu cultures and countries and sort of celebrates both the heritage of the vaults and then also sort of the, the present day and the direction the society has been going for, you know, a few years now, which is really expanding on a global scale and connecting people of all different uh, ways of life together. United under one love of single cask whiskey. There's a creed in there somewhere. I think that's, that's what it is. So that's, that's a new monogram. And then below, and perhaps probably not as easy to see on this camera because of the lighting, but is the new label design. And Jenna, do you mind just putting that other one up again, just yeah. for reference? So we, we shift some things around, obviously fonts a little different. You'll see the stripe here doesn't go down the line and excuse me, just go down the full length of the label. The labels are updated to different, different materials. Um, I really like this sort of I want to say it's higher quality, but it's got more texture. I don't know. It's one of those things. You, get, you guys would appreciate this. Um, this stripe here doesn't go all the way down. And it's also for every bottle, it's fixed in place. Like the one that Jenna has there, you can see the stripes in the past have gone through the text. And sometimes it's difficult to read. And so just for, for clarity, we've moved it over here. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll be... I'll be Again, I apologize. It's a little tough to see. That's and quality, and but... Charles from Drinking Caveman also mentioned that it is the topper as well, the cork top. The cork top as well, yeah. You can see it's that. the new monogram. Yep. Uh, so this is, our big, <laughs> this is our big reveal on a YouTube live stream <laughs> at home during a pandemic, but that's that's as fancy as it's gonna get for a members club that's uh, far different from a traditional whiskey brand. But anyway, so as we'll get into this, some of these labels will have yeah. some more information for our, our whiskey, such as the ones that are double matured in two different types of casks or are finished as, as we call them. We actually disclose now both types of casks using the maturation process, which just gives more information, more transparency. Um, previously, you know, for the, any of those whiskeys we've had that have been double matured, we've just legally, I mean, you're supposed to just disclose the most recent class, excuse me, the most recent cask using maturation to so the final cask. Um, but we've actually gone ahead and now we've just given more a full breakdown of both types of casts. So you can see exactly uh, 
which was which cast the spirit was matured in. So I'm excited about that. I think I think yeah. that really it's just for learning and understanding flavor and how it's impacted by from different types of oak. Yeah, absolutely. You know, along that quest, it's 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 good. You know, good so. for transparency, all that good stuff. So I just love this. These labels are a little bigger. I just think it, they, they look so good. Uh, they look really crisp. And again, with the washed out LED lighting, it's maybe not as crisp, but <laughs> you'll have to get one for yourself and, and see. Anyway. <laughs> So. All right. I can smell my my office here smells amazing. So Michael Brady says monogram would look good good great on cufflinks. No, I, I'm mm. I'm sure it would. I mean, um, it's been uh, I guess this quarantine's kept me away from cufflinks for a while, but um, all new members can get a, a monogram lapel pin for sure with with the monogram yes. that'll be coming. So. Brian McCoy in the house, by the way. Hi, Tom, Ben, and Jenna. Brian McCoy from Seattle. Good to see you, Brian. Uh, Tom says, cheers, Brian. So, wow. Okay, Jenna, I, I sense that you're just like, let's get a whiskey. Uh, let's you're, start, you're let's already, get one going. Wow, wow. <laughs> We're supposed to be like maintaining the suspense for everybody, and I, I feel that you're falling. You're but falling. I'm so excited. I know, because... I know, I know. All right, so first whiskey. Let's do this. Can you? You have the description in front of you, right? I'll show the bottle. Yeah. Do you want to, can I explain what it is? And maybe it's probably better if you read it than if I. Yeah. So the first one that we're going to be tasting is 12.33, which is in our juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. And it is called the most fun with your clothes on. That is quite catchy. I like that. And this is a nine year uh, first fill barrel at 59% ABV. And this is a space side. Did I mention that? Yeah, yeah. I love so. I love these young, and by young I mean sort of like ten years and younger first fill bourbon barrels, just really juicy, fresh, fruity from space side. Like those are those. This is style. yeah. This is so bright on the nose. So bright on the nose. Like it smells like it's going to be very packed on the palate you know like you smell some things and it's kind of light and it's like kind of you know like whispers of of notes but this just smells so full so i'm, I'm excited to taste this yeah the most fun with their cloves on i suspect there'll be a bit of a hint of clove oh yeah it's as it says here but yeah what are you getting what's your first impression um so it smells though that I, I did get a very just big burst of of like vanilla cake, like a good vanilla cake, like a funfetti cake, actually. This smells like funfetti cake. I'm sorry, I went ahead and like tasted right away, but it's a, like a really multi-layered aroma. You know, like mm -hmm. a, I think you were talking about how some whiskeys have sort of whispers of different flavors or aromas. This one is sort of, it's pretty heavy. It's very thick. It you know? is. Ooh. That is, oh, that is so I mean, good. Yeah, describe it, describe <laughs> oh, That is fantastic. It is, it, so nose and palate translate very well. They, it is a very smooth translation or, you know, transition from nose to palate. It is so full and juicy on the palate. It is just, wow, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think this juicy oak and vanilla flavor for profile, which is the sort of the light, well, I was gonna say the blue, then I was gonna say the lighter blue, then I realized they're actually, of our 12 flavor profiles, three of them are blue. The medium blue yeah. uh, is this one. And I just, I, I think it's one of the, it's it's sort of a hidden gem within the flavor profiles. I mean, cause you can get a lot of flavor packed into these younger whiskeys at times. They're not always younger, but um, they're often really good wood, first filled bourbon barrels, fresh, yeah. imparting a lot of flavor into the spirit. And I think that's exactly what this is. That is just explosive on the palate. And um, let's see, Matthew Parks, um, the ABV on this is 59% ABV. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, Matthew Parks says, after seeing so many SMWS bottles in everyone's vlog backgrounds, <laughs> I'm super tempted to sign up. Appreciate that. Yeah, we've... Uh, 
I'm Jenna, you have a good background there. Is it a good example? We've been really lucky, I think, you know, just to have a lot of support from a lot of a lot of people in the YouTube community too. A lot of YouTubers or whiskey tubers, I should say. Yeah. Uh, it's it's been amazing. So, but I, I think it all, all in good fun because the whiskey has been just I think spectacular. All in good fun. Yeah, I think it, fun. It, yeah. it definitely speaks for itself. I think that you know we I have learned more in tasting these society whiskeys than I have. I mean, in always about whiskey in general, um, just because I've been able to be exposed to a lot of things that I wouldn't normally get my hands on. And then on flavor wise, you know, learning, you know, teaching myself new flavor profiles and aromas and just continuing to kind of expose my palate to a lot of new things. So it's, yeah, this is, it's, man, this is so good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm into this one. I'm, I'm in this one big time. I mean, I, I just, uh, oh, and I, I should mention too, because, you know, I know we've talked about this in the past um, in previous live tastings we actually didn't disclose the pricing of these of these whiskeys it'll be said to be released tomorrow not not because we were intended to re withhold it we just right didn't talk about the price and i know a lot of people were commenting before just asking for the prices so um we're going to be up front this time just to as a reference point for tomorrow so this one is a uh, 95 dollars and i and all prices yeah. will be for member uh, you know our whiskeys are for members exclusively so you have to be a member of the club you can sign up on those site, you know, of course, and we'll talk about that at the end again, but uh, it's 95, of course, before shipping and tax and, you know, shipping varies if you bundle multiple bottles together. And, and we'll talk about that again at the end, but so $95 for this, you know, 59% nine year old first filled bourbon barrel space side whiskey. Uh, is it the most fun with your clothes on? It's super fun. It's, um, I'm almost getting, I'm going to add water to it in a second. Um, just because I'm curious, but there is a very like, subtle like bubble gum I'm almost getting like on the very back of the palette or like a it's like candy floss that's probably a better term for it it's um yeah like candy floss just it's that is stellar that is a lot of fun you know it's interesting because I think for me like your, the first impression was it's very it was more fruit forward a lot of sort of creamy vanilla like a little bit of like a honeysuckle thing but yeah. now I'm, I'm actually looking at the bottle here. And so the bottle sort of describes the official tasting notes, or really sort of an abbreviated version of the official tasting notes, the full ones are on the website. Um, and there's a lot of hints of, of chamomile, which I definitely get a little bit yep. of, sort of a tea note. Uh, and then, then it goes, it gets really herbal here with tarragon, cloves, eucalyptus oil, uh, peppermint tea. And so as I'm, as after I read that, I'm going through this, I'm like, yeah, there is a lot of that in there. And so it's, it has a more exotic profile than I initially yeah. became acquainted with, you know? Yeah. I think one of the notes on there was Turkish delight. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. All right. Did you add water? Yeah, I'm going to right now. Yeah. I just put a drop. Literally, I don't have much in my glass, but um, I did add a drop of water. Oh, man. That brings up more of the eucalyptus for me. Definitely a little more herbaceous, like herbal. I definitely get water brings out a lot more of those like almost savory herbs to it. It's that's that is stellar. Yeah, nine, nine years old could be fifteen. If you if you told me it, I would have believed it. It's there's just so much flavor, so much going on. Oh, and that's hot too. Yeah, right. that was that was stellar. Hmm. Tom says this distillery does some runs with very short fermentations and others runs with long ferments with like hundred plus mm. hours, which is crazy. Yeah. So um, I actually was learning last week about fermentation times and kind of how, you know, different fermentation times can bring out different esters. And that's been a very interesting thing to really kind of dial in and learn about. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's really delicious. And to kind of address the elephant in the room, I have blocked um, a certain person. I know we're getting some very inappropriate comments. So I've gone ahead and just taken care of that. So now we can go about our, our tasting here and, and keep tasting some of these amazing whiskeys. So thank you to everyone who kind of chimed in on that. So yeah. I'm, I'm ready to- Keep your clothes on. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think at $95, you know, that is, 
that's a that's a, a stellar pick. I mean, that is oh, that's good. All right. Number two. All right. So that was a good start. I was, I was I'm, I'm stoked about this. I'm, I'm kind of I'm taking a somber approach with these. It's uh because I, I've in the past I've kind of kind of ahead of myself and really kind of committed to a whiskey and then I've been up that's been upheld by the next one because there's I'm looking down the line here. Uh, let's just get into it. So number two, this is forty eight point one one zero. Was this the one you were most excited for, Ben? I'm not answering that question, but I knew that you would think it was this one. Either way, I'm, I'll tell you yeah. if it was or not. All right. Um, so I can apologize. Do you want to, can you read about it? Do you mind? Yeah, I will be I'm happy to do that. So the second one that we are going to be tasting is 48.110. It is a space side um, that was transferred into a first fill Sautern Barrique, which is music to my ears and I know to Ben's ears as well. Um, this is a 15 year at 56.6% ABV and it is called Sauternes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm about that. That's a great name and it's a... Uh, Color's beautiful on it. Yeah, forty-eight one one zero in the sweet, fruity, and mellow flavor profile. That's the ah, yes, same color here. Um, and this is what I was talking about. This is, uh, I think, one if maybe not the only one. Um, this the label here, and again, I apologize for the lighting. It's either I'm really dark with the without the light, or uh, and you can read it more clearly. But uh, this actually breaks down both casks now used. As Jenna mentioned, this was ex bourbon hog said. So the label here says now initial cast ex bourbon hog said. Oh, it does say that. And then final cask here, it says first fill ex saw turn break. And I love that. I think that really just, that adds more clarity, you know, and it's something we, we were all wanting to do for a while. Right. So, um, and I should also, I should also address here too, something a little different and, and sorry to keep you guys from this, but another important observation I, I want to call out before other members notice it first. Um, we've actually dropped the terminology of single cask whiskey. On this one, it says single malt whiskey. And actually, that's the case on all of our labels now, just for consistency. Just because, although it's in essence, the, the contents of this cask were only matured in a single cask, they were transferred, the contents was transferred to a second cask. And so I think the definition of single cask has been up to, for debate for a while. Uh, it has not been blended with any other spirit from any other cask. It's simply been a linear transfer from one cask to another. But just to, we, we just decided to go ahead and just, just not to cause any confusion or rather just eliminate confusion. We've now put both casks down in the breakdown as well as just called it single malt scotch whiskey. But just know that in this case and everything that bears this sort of style has been transferred uh, from one cask to another and not blended with other, other spirits or other casks. So what do you think? I don't know, I haven't tasted it yet. The, the yeah. color on this is really beautiful though. It is like a, it is like a true golden dram. This is a just beautiful golden drop. I'm, I'm Scotch, excited. a golden dream. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Take a moment on this one. So I, I will just say right away. I mean, this is this is one that I had tasted. This was the the half taste that I tasted. Last, you know, was it last week? Uh, and it was so different right away. You know, and it yeah. really just reminds me of these, once cast strength whiskeys are open, they need a little bit of time to breathe because it, it's so much more, there's so much more depth, you know, right now. Oh, man. 15 okay. years old, what was it? 13 years yeah. in next bourbon hog said? Is that uh, what you said? I think so. Yeah, let me get that up. Yeah, so yeah, 13 years in a bourbon hog said and then Transfer into a first fill X Sautern Barrique. Yeah, for, so 15 years, also two years in that Sautern, I guess. That, I mean, that's that's my uh, quarantine math right there. <laughs> you mentioned this is $115 is the price yes. point of the phone. Oh. And 56.6% ABV, just to drop that back in there. All right, oh. going in. All right, what's your first impression? Oh. <laughs> Mm. I'm not allowed to say bad words, am I? <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, the mouthfeel on that is absolutely beautiful. And the flavor, get, I mean, that just sticks. 
every nook and cranny. That is, wow. That is, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. That is beautiful. Yeah, there's like a, the, I get this a lot. So it's it's the finish in Sauterne Brie. So Sauterne's a, a very sweet you know, French dessert wine from, from you know, mm. white grape. And it's a unique profile, I think, to other sort of fortified or, or dessert wines altogether. But um, I get like a musky cheese note. Like that's that's the most prevalent for me. It's like the musky, and then there's like a potpourri element. It's a very sort of, uh, I mean, it's floral. I don't, I don't want to just describe it as what gender is saying. It's feminine, but it has a more traditional sort of, I don't know, Victorian era yes. to it. Does that make Absolutely. sense? Yes. And I was going to say that because, you know, because I would know. Because I, I 135.1, that was my first exposure really to, you know, like what a a heavier, you know, like Sauterne. I've had some other Sauterne, you know, finished whiskeys, but that was like my first experience with a real, uh, like a single cask, you know, cask strength Sauterne experience. And I had that. And that's what I got was like, I felt like I was in France in a castle, like eating all the like weird cheeses and there was like a breeze and there was a dog and it was just like a moment for me. And this, I'm getting that same like experience from this, that musky kind of funky quality. And that's, you know, you would think, oh, this is a super sweet dessert wine. I'm going to maybe get some of those really sweet, you know, flavor notes, but you don't like it's this. It's so beautiful. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Steve H has been okay, going really to say it's not very good. Um, oh, I, I think we didn't. I mean, it, it's tough, you guys. I mean, yeah. Last time we did a stream a couple of weeks ago, we did uh, our mid month yep. turn preview tasting Good. for the month of mid month of April, and I think we were a little too obvious with our love of one uh, that didn't last very long afterwards. So, apologize, guys. I think I think at the end of the day, you just deserve an honest. <laughs> tasting it. And this is the first time Jenna tasted any of these. I've tasted. Yeah, sorry. Are... Uh, I just, yeah. you know, you're gonna take our, you're gonna get an honest feedback, which I think is pretty unique for, uh, I don't know, other whiskey companies, but, but uh, we can't, we can't help it, you know. Yeah, I, and that's that's really why I save them, you know, for moments like this because I want my reactions to be genuine and honest, and I, I, I would want that, you know, if I was, you know, watching this, I, I want. I want to see people's reactions when they drink something for the first time. So this is, yeah, this is stellar. And Zach, Zach mentioned that, you know, Sauterne reminds him of blue cheese dipped in honey. And I think that's a great, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's a great way to describe this. It's, it's, I love that kind of funky herbal. There's almost like a, like a tea quality to this. I'm getting, you know, like a, a black tea quality, which is really nice. So yeah. 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 Um, just a real quick, a couple of comments I'm seeing, you know, just about, about what we're talking about, about the whiskey moving pretty quickly and members snatching it up. A um, couple of comments about, you know, Hey, is a club club at its club at its limit? Are there too many people? Um, you know, I, I just, just to address that, I'll, I'll share my opinion here kind of from behind the scenes is that right now is an unusual circumstance. I think we're, I think oh, across the board, it's not just a society that has seen really an in increase in enthusiasm in our whiskeys. I think it's across the board. Um, just great whiskey has is, is been of great interest, I think, to a lot of people who are now confined to their homes. And, you know, that's not going to last forever. Uh, so, you know, instead of just saying, okay, we want to turn people away when people are knocking the door, we're working diligently behind the scenes. I mean, tomorrow is going to be our biggest outturn ever. And we did that in response to sort of the growing enthusiasm. So I think this period of time is it'd be short lived. I would say kind of hang in there. We haven't really been in the business of closing our doors to people. We've always wanted to be inviting from that sense. So it's a little tricky. Uh, we want to continue doing that. And of course, a lot of our members also like inviting their friends and sharing with their friends. And we don't want to deny current members the opportunity to share something they enjoy with their friends. So it's basically, I'm just trying to say, we're, yeah, what we're, what we're doing in the back end is really just sort of getting as many great casts as we can of course, there are only so many great casts of whiskey to, to begin with. It, they don't, it doesn't grow on trees. It takes a lot of time. But uh, but I think this is a kind of an extraordinary circumstance with us all at home right now, too. Yes, absolutely. And to answer um, the Scotch Test Dummies question, yes. Thank you, Sipsy Russell. This is 56.6% ABV on 48.110. Have you added water? Yeah. No, I haven't yet. But Tom asked if we're getting... 
a, he said, are you picking up on a meatiness from the make of number 48 balance with Sauterne notes? You're getting a meatiness? I'm getting all, it's for me, it's all, it's all sort of like a confectionery sugar and sweet. And, you know, I'm not getting a lot of meatiness. I mean, for me, right. sort of musky cheese note to it. Yeah. But it's actually relative to other sauterne casks, you know, finished or fully matured. It's actually kind of it's lighter. You know, I think it's more balanced between the classical space side spirit and also the French oak. Everything is really sort of in. in, in that sounds pretty cheap. Everything is, things is in unity with this one. I'm adding water. I'll do two drops this time. <laughs> Yeah, the first two are very different. Love them, love them a lot for very different reasons. Oh. The one thing, ooh, I feel like water almost makes this more kind of funky and savory. Huh. It kind of tones down the sweetness for me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm just, I'm just on the nose. I could. But mouthfeel and and you know viscosity still remain it's it's a very chewy kind of dense whiskey and you know if we're talking about just the first two that we tasted they're both so just jam-packed with with flavor i mean they are just very robust whiskeys um with very just explosive flavors yeah big big bold flavor on both of those bold yep i agree that's and even in the glass, like just looking at it in the glass, it's it's quite leggy in the glass. Yeah. And and just again, it's a, that's a dense just. Dense yeah, I'm trying to think like if if I were new to single cask whiskey, you know, through the Scotch Whiskey Society or other or cast strength whiskey, yeah. which, you know, if I was this is my first time tasting whiskey in its essentially its purest form, this would leave a these two would leave a huge impression on me. Oh. Like, I, I think it wasn't that long ago in my life that. This would have been unlike anything I'd ever tasted before. And I think, you know, and essentially a lot of these, most of our whiskeys are like that, but some of yeah. them are, are bolder than others. And these are really, really you know, very full. bold. Yes, I agree. But, but very approachable that, especially the first one, you know, that one was just, that was just a beautiful example of, you know, good single cat. I just, it's beautiful. The first one was just beautiful uh, across the board from nose to palate. The second one for me was more, just kind of deeper and robust, but both very bold on flavor. So I'm excited for the next three. <laughs> yeah, just want to give a quick shout out to to Craig, a uh, fellow member from Chicago who's here. May the fourth be with you all. Should have addressed that for my fellow Star Wars oh. fans. Um, little fun nerdy fact. Uh, and if you, any of you guys know, not to get off topic, but a whiskey blog called the Single Malt Alliance. Uh, I think. Maybe you figure out the name Alliance came from the Rebel Alliance in Star Wars. And so, yes, I'm it celebrating. Did? Yeah, of course. I mean, oh. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And, <laughs> my whole life. and so it's a, that's where it came from, of course. And yeah. So fun way to celebrate May the 4th. Sorry, we didn't do a proper, you know, holiday acknowledgement for all the Star yeah. Wars. Fans. May the 4th be with you too. So good to see you, Craig. But thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, wow. So. Yes. And to answer the question, yes, these, well, this is my first time tasting these. I know Ben, you've only tasted one and a half. Of yeah. These. So, yeah. So, right. I, I had one, I had a dram. This one I did taste briefly, but yeah. I, I should mention too, I mean, I mentioned this earlier that I think the first time tasting any of these whiskeys with a brand new pour from a fresh bottle, it's always very different from right now. I think right now that one we just tasted was so significantly improved from the first time. Yeah. It just needs a little bit of time to breathe, you know, and really sort of develop and, and, and open. So, yeah. You ready to move on? Let's move on. Michael, so gonna... hi, Michael, sorry. He's pouring 93.114. Oh, nice. Not, not, a, not a bad one to put pouring. All right, so number three, so we have five today, so we'll move on. So number three is 39.187. It's called Play on the Tongue Duality. Mm. And I don't know if you can see that there. And again, I apologize for the, the this being a little washed out, but this is the yellow label, which indicates our spicy and dry flavor profile. Yes. So this is 13 years old. Again, I think that part's probably washed out too, but it says big one three right here in yellow. 13 years old, uh, distilled the 24th of July, 2006 from a refill ex-bourbon hogshead. So 
I mean, not to, I mean, well, let's taste it. What, what are you getting right away? Because I think the spicy and dry flavor profiles probably be very different from what we've had so far. Yeah, this I'm getting butterscotch. This is, and I, I'm actually kind of starting to notice that I'm, I get that, you know, I've been getting that more frequently in this flavor profile that mm. this is, yeah, big butterscotch notes on the, on just on the nose for me up front. And you have to mention the color on this is quite light and, you know, like a straw, hey, yeah. hay color, maybe. Or like a Chardonnay type uh, of thing. Chardonnay, or a, yeah. Keeping with the French theme for any French viewers out there. <laughs> <laughs> so spicy and dry is, is the profile. Do you, do you pick up any of any like any aromas that hint at that? Um, I could definitely see the spice element of this. I'm just trying to kind of pinpoint exactly what spice that is. Um, because there is definitely, you know, when you kind of smell spices, you get that kind of it's a, not like a burn, but kind of that little burn in your in your nose and it definitely has it so it's like kind of a think of a spiced butterscotch is what i'm getting i just haven't quite pinpointed what kind of spices those are exactly quick shout out to michael epstein who says hi jen and ben michael good to see you glad to have you here um sorry guys we've been it, it, there's a lot going on with the <laughs> in front of me and and uh, we want to acknowledge everything we can and um our colleague here, Tom Smith, is also in the in the chat. I appreciate you, Tom, for going through and addressing some questions specific, of course, to the whiskeys we're tasting. But um, as we go into this one, I, you know, for everybody who's just joined too, and if you're watching live, this is, if it's not obvious by the, the caption below, this is a live tasting of whiskeys coming out tomorrow for our May out turn. So 1 p.m. Eastern on the dot is when they will be live. And uh, so we're just having our first impressions with, with a lot of these. So, yeah, so go on. What, what, I mean, I mean we kind of established that it's in color a bit lighter and paler. Yeah. Butterscotch is what you said. What else do you think? I, are you getting that? Yeah, I'm just getting like a almost, but then in there, there's like an earthy quality to this. Like on the very end, if you just kind of keep digging with your nose, you get almost like a, like a grassy, like a dried grass note. Yeah, this to me is very resemblant to like what it is like to walk into a distillery. I mean, there is a maltiness to it. It is, it's not sweet. It has like a, to me, it's sort of like a dry yeast quality, which. There you go. I, I mean, again, I, I don't expect everybody to walk into distillers all the time and know exactly what that smells like, but I just, it's something that, that I remember pretty fondly. Um, it's the opposite of the first one and the first couple, which are sort of sweeter and fruitier a bit more. It's definitely drier. There's yes. an earthiness and the grain, I think, from the malts combination with like a yeast. It's a very sort of raw, you know. That's a good of, way to describe that. Yeah. We call it like a farmyard type of thing, if not yeah. a distillery. I always think of, I grew up riding horses and I was in a barn oh, yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, some of these aromas really kind of resonate with me. And this reminds me of like grain, like horse grain, like feeding horses. And you get that hay kind of smell and the horse grain kind of smell. Um, but yeah, that's. I'm I'm with you on kind of the farmyard thing. Oh man, this is so different. This is like a whiskey that mm -hmm. it's very atypical of what you would find on the shelf. It, to me, it's 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 more raw than the first two. It's raw. It's it's for people who want whiskey oh, that yeah. literally tastes like it was just made and it came just out of the cask. It wasn't tailored to any one thing or one style. It's just pure in your face. Uh, and, yeah, I it is. I, and I agree with you completely. This is a very, you almost like, have you ever tasted, you know, like when you taste new make and you kind of get that, that oiliness of new make. I'm definitely getting that here. Hmm. Very, it's definitely very oily whiskey. Hmm. That's yeah. fantastic. Um. So sorry to answer the question about cast number. This is, 39.187 at 59.8% ABV. The Scotch test dummy says a horse walked into a bar and the bartender said, Hey buddy, why the long face? <laughs> wow. That is a, that is a classic. That is a classic joke that just uh, speaks to the play on the tongue duality of this whiskey right here. But, uh, yeah, very different. I mean, 13 years very old, I, I think it tastes very much all of all 13 years. It's yeah. more raw. The, you know, there's no, uh, it, it's a refill ex bourbon hogshead, so more gentle sort of cask influence, uh, which allows more of the spirit to shine. 
And I think that's yeah. also plays a part too. Very spirit forward. Yeah. Which is, it's a nice departure and, and I quite enjoy that. Um, yeah, it is like being in a distillery. That's probably the best. If a barn and a distillery, you know, fuse together as one, this would be it. Yeah. I think, that, you know, the, we were talking about earlier, the first couple, just as we're moving along, the first couple, I think if you shared with somebody who was new to single cast whiskey or hadn't had single cast whiskey yeah. or cast drink, it would be easier to make a big impression with those. This is more of a whiskey drinker's whiskey. I, you know, I mean, in terms of it's not some, like what you find on the shelf, it's more raw. It, it's, it's not more aggressive because I think it's all approachable, but the flavor profile is really sort of just more assertive. I agree. That's a so depends what you like. A hundred percent with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, that's good. This would probably be good for like a daytime. I mean, it's well, it's you're 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 in the West Coast, so it's kind of. I mean, I was going to say like eleven a.m. You know, sort of a Sunday, Sunday eleven a.m. dram. Yeah, breakfast whiskey. <laughs> Let's see. I just want to make sure we're. So Ari asked which bottle we're discussing. Again, this is thirty nine point one eight seven. Um, play on the tongue duality, and this is a thirteen year space side from a refill hogshead in our spicy and dry flavor profile. Yeah, I should mention for for if, if if you're just tuning in, haven't been following along too. Once we finish up with the live stream, I'll go ahead as I tend to do is below in the, in the caption. I'll actually timestamp when we taste each whiskey. So if you want to go back or when the outturn drops tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and you just want to kind of refresh your our open and honest opinions in real time, you'll be able to go right to it. So that was the third one of, of, of five. So we're moving on. So, did you have water? I did. I added water. I thought, yeah. I thought it was pretty consistent. It didn't really change the flavor profiles dramatically. For me, what do you think? It became very jammy for me, like apricot jam with water. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Very jammy with water for me. Ooh. Gold Farmer 808 says, 11.48 a.m. here in Hawaii. Well, this is uh, Aloha. This is your dram. <laughs> John Bourne says, so that was the third whiskey, sit right? 17 ago. Yes, John, I wish we were tasting. Well, I don't know if I actually wish that if we were tasting oh, it today. No. But uh, this is <laughs> three down, two more to go. <laughs> 20 would be, um, that would be a chore. That would be, that would be a, a, a big, yeah, 20. Wow. I don't know if I could do 20 all in one sitting. Craig asked, do daytimes matter in quarantine? That's a really good point. I mean, I think our, here, our times have been sort of skewed at, you know, on and off, but yeah, uh, just kind yeah. of all blurs together. It seems. Yeah, and Morgan Schaefer says, "Love breakfast whiskey." I do too. I mean, what were we talking about this when we were doing the our sort of tasting, you know, the art of tasting live stream, yep. talking about different time of day, how that can impact and absolutely. Uh, they do say that your palate is best in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. it's the most responsive in the morning. So it makes sense. It's not, I mean, yeah. if you haven't really had a lot to eat, your palate's not saturated, your ability right. to taste is probably heightened in the early. I'd be curious to know, you know, as far as like, you know, master blenders or distillers, if, if they have kind of dialed in a time that they have, you know, notice that their palate is the most responsive if they do that, you know, early in the morning or if they wait until later in the afternoon. Um, that's, that's a curious question. I have, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, so we open on because I'm going to cut it now. <laughs> Are you ready? Um, all right, good, because I am. So number okay. four of today dropping tomorrow, 1 p.m., which I suspect I don't, I don't want to say things because now last time we said something was good, we, you know, members are saying, oh, don't say it's good because then it's going to be there. So I don't want to say anything too good about it, but I don't know how long it's going to last kind of thing. Uh, this is cast 10.183 called Velociraptor or Xenomorph. Uh, I think if you're watching from the UK, it would probably be Xenomorph. Xenomorph. But uh, 10.1183, oily and coastal flavor profile. It happens to be a 14 year old from the island of Isla. Um, unpeated for the most part. There could be a little hint of peat, but it's traditionally unpeated Isla whiskey, which um, 
used to be the way it was made for the most part, but nowadays peated whiskey is, and for like for a while now, peated whiskey has been sort of the, the house style of many highlight distilleries. Uh, this is one who has a great, great range just as is without 14 years old from a refill sherry, but I should mention. So Velociraptor or Xenomorph or Xenomorph as we would say, uh, just a funny caption here, a clash of two mighty titans, a smackdown. There's a lot of exclamation points in this label, by the way. More exclamation points than any label that I've seen. That's a great but, way to describe the nose on this. It's just a bunch of exclamation points. <laughs> okay. A clash of two, of two mighty titans, a smackdown, a freestyle rap battle between flavors of sherry and the sea, two great adversaries of old. Which will win? Well, interesting. Velociraptor, we all know, is the dinosaur. Um, With the short arms. Uh, well, relative to its body, they were longer. Like the T Rex have a really They're long. T Rex is short. Velociraptors don't have short arms. Well, vlo okay. We, we'll, 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 we don't have to go to somebody. Here, please but. chime in on this. A dinosaur expert. Do velociraptors have short arms? <laughs> I, as I understand, velociraptors, as you see in like the film Jurassic Park, were not what they really looked like. They were like big birds, kind of like they're like this big. Oh. But in the, mo in the mo movie Jurassic Park, Velociraptors became famous because uh, Spielberg thought they would look better if they were like more like mini T-Rexes. Uh, they were pretty badass. And Xenomorph is, is from the, sort of from the 1979 film Alien. Am I, is my sci-fi nerdism showing? Because I, I feel like this is really, really, this is- I'm learning. Um, from the Ridley Scott franchise, Alien, Xenomorph was sort of the main species of alien. So Velociraptor versus Xenomorph. Wow, I need to I need a whiskey because I think my true self has been revealed. Uh, Fourteen years old, Isla Sherry Butt. What do you think right away? The nose on this is a bunch of exclamation marks for sure. That is, you know, I think if I were to to nose all of these blind, I would be able to pick this one out as oily and coastal. It smells oily and coastal to me. Like there's just a I don't know, there's a, I don't know the best way to describe it. It's kind of hard to put into words, but if I were to just nose these completely blind, I think this one would just stick out like that, just based off of nose. I think it definitely is an oily and coastal nose. Yeah, oily and coastal. It's it's actually, I think, on a profile we see as often, but I think it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. And this, And just for those who have any questions about it, I know Tom just listed all of the kind of details um, as far as ABV and price, age um, in the comments. So thank you, Tom. So what else do you think? I, I mean, I have thoughts on this one. It's it's so different from, so this is the one that I tasted first. You okay. know, when, you the bottle. when I sent, filled those samples to send out to you, um, it was the first one I tasted and I was excited because I saw this label. I saw the name come in down the line months ago. I was like, yep. oh, when are we get that? I feel like I've been counting down. Um, but I, my first impression was very different from my game right now. It's it's so much more enjoyable just after a little bit of time to breathe. Yeah. It almost has like a maple syrup quality to the nose. I'm, I'm trying to nail that down, but it smells syrupy and there's like a little kind of just burst of sweetness, but it's almost maple syrup like to me. Yeah. So, I mean, right away, to, just to call out too, obviously, in terms of color, all these whiskeys are naturally colored. Um, usually with a sherry butt, you tend to see darker whiskeys. This one's sort of on the lighter side for a sherry cask. Um, that speaks to, I think, the fact that it's probably, it's a refill cask, could be second time around, third time, I meaning it's been reused a few times. And the more you use the cask, the, the usually the less influential it will be in the, the makeup of the flavor of the, of yeah. the spirit. So, um, and I think whether it's natural with sherry, you'd see sort of a darker whiskey. But Do this we know is what sort of, type of sherry this was in? Uh, I think, so by default, if it says a sherry butt, it's 99 plus percent of the time Oloroso sherry. Okay. Um, you know, by default, I think by default, PX will probably be more in punch-ins, but I think, I, 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 I'm pretty sure, and Tom, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think on every other type of sherry that's not Oloroso, in our cast, we actually specify. Like, we'll specify okay. it's Pedro Jimenez or anything else. But uh, I think industry-wide, just sherry butt is synonymous with Oloroso. That's... All right, I'm going to taste it. Cheers. Cheers.
man. Yep. Yeah, it's like the, wow. It's nutty. There is like a, a nuttiness to this, um, like marzipan and like fruit. It's like a, it makes me think of like a, a cheese board with like fig crackers and cheese and jam. That is, that is like a full meal. Zach, Zach says, pretty sure we talked about Zach's our colleague in Florida. I mean, you guys have probably seen him on the channel. Zach says, pretty sure we talked about this like eight months ago. That's how much buildup there is. It, it is true. We saw this. You're right. Probably eight months ago, this name and this 10.183 Isla from a sharing bud. And you're right. I think we have been looking for this for eight months. But man, the, the balance between like the soft sherry notes, it's not too dominant. It's really mm -hmm. well balanced with the not at all. classic solidity of Isla. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, that is like a full on meal to me. Like you get sweet, you get savory, you get salty, you get, you know, there's just I can like I can vision it. It it is like this set this whiskey sets a scene and I'm somewhere beautiful where I have this beautiful just like cheese plate or board in front of me with all these different elements and it all comes together so beautifully. That's. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I should mention a couple of comments coming in about, yep. Is it sold out? Well, no, it hasn't been released yet. It's not sold out. Um, you know, look, look I, I, I think all these whiskeys that we've had are pretty phenomenal. This is, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling. None of them are really sticking out as being the most, uh, attention grabbing, but this, I, well, I think oh. on paper, the, the classic, the classic sherry butt with the Isla spirit is, is really unique. Um, and I think this is just so well balanced, the, the harmony between the two. Um, but I think, I think, and you guys can, Tom, who's in, in the chat is actually, Tom is responsible for putting together the whole selection. And so with each monthly outturn, puts them together as I, I sort of liken his work to making like a, a rock album. It doesn't have to be a rock album. It can be any al album or music, you know, it's like, there's a whole there's a story to be told and so there's always a diversity of you know the different styles anyway uh, i think tom you've 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 we've really tried to get as many from the, of course we share this one cask with all different countries around the world but we got a good allocation you know for our society members here in the u.s so uh yeah i think it will be popular it'll probably go quickly but uh if you're watching this you're the first ones to know about it so 1 p.m eastern right. tomorrow with, you know sign on or give us a call yeah there's there's not one that is standing out more than any other to me as of right now. They all are just such robust, full whiskeys that I would, I have enjoyed this so much today. Um, these have been just very, just kind of stick to your ribs kind of whiskey. So really, really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is, uh, it's, you know, it's funny. The first time I tasted that, just a few days ago, it was so raw and so tannic. It was, I don't want to use the word offensive. Mm -hmm. I'm not wanting to get offended, but, but it was like very aggressive, you know, and yeah. it was really, you had to be in a mood to be able to tackle it. You know what I mean? Or, or I mean, if, and for some people, I mean, if you guys just really like that all the time, uh, then and that's for you. But I found it now it's so much more balanced and the sherry notes are more in sync with this sort of the, the coastal salinity notes from yeah. my book. Yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not getting that. I know mine's had a little time to breathe, but um, yeah, that's a very happy marriage of flavors for sure. Yeah, yeah. For this sure. One. Actually, I haven't added water. Oh, I guess I have to do that. <laughs> no, you don't have to. No, I want I like to. I, I have like to get better. I want to do it. And it's, I'm reminding myself, you know, when I'm tasting whiskeys for the first time to just add a little water just to see what the experience is so well i have to say for 61.1 percent, this was pretty spot on and approachable dangerously approachable dangerously approachable yes right yes i mean that was wild oh man mm. Oh, that's one's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, Tom says clarified. So ninety bottles of ten point one eight three. Um, mind you, we've had a open one to share with you today, so <laughs> one less than that. Um, but you'll see, you know, at one p.m. tomorrow. Um, and usually, we we usually tend to get about sixty bottles. It, it has been for a while on average of of per allocation. So this time, Tom has put together an outturn of twenty different bottles. But also, in some instances, we've been able to boost our allocation for those to just offer more. But again, in the scheme of things, they're small numbers. You know, we're talking about ninety in the U.S. and that's it. So that's how it goes. Yeah, those are. This has been such a treat. This is a good one. For Monday. Yeah. I mean, this is wow. Really, really great whiskey. So. I'm excited to get to number five and this is like the closer. Yeah. So I think, so what we've pulled one out for number five and, I, and I've been kind of watching the comments here of, uh, is, Pete? Is, is there Pete? And, and uh, yes, so, spoiler alert, there is Pete, but it's a very unconventional Pete's Peter whiskey. Um, in fact, it's called, can you see this? Forget convention. So it's cask 108.19 called Forget Convention, um, peated, as you can see here. And uh, this still November 2011, excuse me, the 2nd of November, 2011. It's a peated space side whiskey, which is interesting from a second fill bourbon barrel, X bourbon, excuse me, second fill barrel, X bourbon, trim number five, uh, seven years old. So young peated space side whiskey. And we don't see a lot of peated whiskey come out of space side. No. Even though it's the largest region in terms of number of distilleries, like 50% of all distilleries are in space side. Uh, very atypical of the region. But uh, what do you think? What do you think of these mainland whiskeys? Well, well I guess we should start with yeah. this one. What do, what do you think of this one? Yeah. So in the the few times that I have had, you know, peated space sides, I have been so surprised by them. You know, my kind of experience with Pete and where I kind of fell in love with Pete were those kind of thick, gooey, like, you know, punch in the palate kind of Isla whiskeys, you know, that Isla Pete that, you know, a lot of us know very well. And uh, these Peated Space Sides have been an, a very nice departure from that. And they've been a very nice surprise in, in kind of exploring what mainland Pete has to offer. It is definitely a little different. You can definitely kind of taste the the flavor differences in mainland Pete versus Isla Pete. Um, but they're, they're amazing. I've, I, we had one two outturns ago, I think the pancetta roulette, which I was a peated space side that I was just so blown away by. Um, so I'm always excited just to see Pete in general. I would get excited to see Pete from anywhere, you know, the, the terroir of Pete and to be able to taste the different, you know, Flavor profiles of peat from around Scotland is is always fun. So I'm excited. Yeah, I think a few years ago, I probably I, I discounted the value of mainland peated whiskeys. I just I didn't I was so in Isla and I still am, but I was just yeah. so yeah, you know, I thought when I want when I want a smoky whiskey, I want it at full octane. Yeah, but I think over the years I really become an appreciate this peated mainland, you know, space side or highland whiskeys. Yeah. They're different in construct, a bit more lighter and approachable, but still smoky and more versatile, you know, um, not better than I love, no. but it's just different, you know? Yeah, it's just different. And I just, I always get excited to see young peated whiskeys. I think that young peated whiskeys are always just full of a surprise and full of flavor and, and, oh, there, you can kind of see the label better that way when it's closer. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yay, look, perfect. Wow. Fifth time's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. You there can it see is. Label. Um, forget convention, seven years old. Yeah. And so an appropriately named name. uh, being that it's a peated space side. What do you what do you think? What are you getting right away? Um oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt after just asking a question, yeah. but we I saw Tom put it in the comments, but interesting about this one, it's sixty-four point six percent ABV. All right. So just uh, in on a high note there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Talk us through this one. Um, you love Pete. Pete yeah. is your, probably is your go-to. Pete right? is. I could talk about Pete all day. Um, this is like a side note, and I'm not going to get off tangent. But I was in Ireland last year, and I went to the Natural History Museum in Dublin, and they had a whole kind of uh, feature on bogs, like peat bogs and bog bodies, and 
just everything that you would find inside of a bog. And they talked about bog butter and just all of this wild stuff. And, you know, peat bogs are so fascinating. And, you know, people use them a long time ago to preserve things. They were, they were used to preserve butter or, you know, goods or meat or all sorts of things. And so peat just really fascinates me. And um, so to kind of be able to taste peat from, I would love to taste just peat from all over the world. So to be able to have an opportunity to taste mainland peat um, is, is, is a treat. So I won't get too in too much into it. Um, we'll have in a couple of months, we'll have a good peat talk kind of later down the road. So oh, yeah. watch out for that. Yeah. A very exciting one. So um, watch out for that. And, uh, but it's, it's sweet. This is like a sweet peat. I'm getting, it's just sweeter to me on the nose than it is salty, which I guess makes sense because it is not coming from Isla. It's not necessarily coastal peat, I guess, but it's definitely a sweeter kind of aroma. Are you getting a sweetness to this? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, I think sweet, not in the sense of like a, candy or sugary no. sweet, but it's, it's like a maltiness uh, you're right the the, the the salinity is absent like this type of this sort of coastal characters of salt water or seafoam that's gone i mean that's that's yeah. different from coastal whiskeys this is peter Speyside. it's it's like a, like a cold ash type of thing mixed with a, a good go. like a malt sweetness like the grain itself the natural sugars from the grain i think or what what's at play here at least that's what i'm sort of assimilating with the and I like that you mentioned cold because it does smell like if cold had a smell, this has that. I definitely get a cold kind of, they're not hot aromas coming off of, you know, into the nose. They're more of a cool aroma coming into the nose. So. Man. Oh man. I don't know what it is. If it's just like Monday and I needed a, a tram or I'm excited about the new labels or what is going on. This one's killer. This is a killer. I, I mean, it's, it's like all of these are killer. That is like it's if a obligatory statement, I know, but it's oh. true. Okay. That is if Laffy Taffy and a peated Laffy Taffy. That's that. <laughs> there it is. That is wild. I haven't had a Laffy Taffy in a, in a while, but that is wild. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a really, a really, I'm going to enjoy this one more than I thought I would. That so, is, uh, that is stellar. That is absolutely stellar. That um, is, but like the finish on that lingers. It is, yes. Okay. Sipsy Russell says like a menthol cool. Yes. That is a great, that's it. That's a great way to kind of describe that. It's like when you use mouthwash and you get that kind of like cold burn in your mouth. That's what this kind of gives you. It's like yeah, that. I like that shout out menthol. I mean, Sipsy, who doesn't even have it in front of him, but actually is doing a better job at, you know, <laughs> what's in front of me than I am. But translating our tasting, our kind of off the wall tasting notes. But that's spot on. You're right. I mean, we're talking about temperature and cold and like, where is that coming from? And you're, and I think that is exactly it. It's like a little, there's an ashy note with yeah. a sort of menthol, menthol, like a wintergreen type of type note with yeah. it. Winter oh, green. Interlay of the maltiness, like the sweetness of the natural sweetness of the malts. Yes, is, there is a sweetness. And it's 64. Oh man. <laughs> so, uh, so I can't come to work tomorrow. I'm going to check my bank account. Yeah, I'm yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be on the couch, logged into my account to get these whiskeys. This is crazy. Uh, Whiskey and Donut says, Let it out, Ben. Let it out. I'm actually letting this one in. Uh, Johnny, just for you. So, Hi, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, Tom is clarified. So 72 bottles of cask 108.19 allocated and is in the bundle. Mm. Um, and just to clar clarify on that, and so if, if you probably notice that every month we have at least one uh, bundle where you actually, there's special pricing. If you bundle multiple whiskeys together, uh, the, the, the actual whiskeys have been predetermined. You know, so it's not a sort of a pick and choose thing, but we've we'll have one coming out tomorrow. It'll be six different bottles in the bundle, and really a great price when you put all these together. Yeah. Um, and every bundle has its own theme and different purpose, really designed for not just tasting a lot of different whiskeys, but it's really about sort of expanding your own knowledge and, and experience with single cask whiskey and different types of styles and flavors. 
Um, so as Tom mentioned, this one is in fact one of the, could it be one of the six that'll be unveiled in the yes. bundle? And he mentioned that it's, I believe, the first and the third one that we tasted today. Um, he said 70, yeah, 72 bottles. And then it is in the bundle along with the first and third tasted today. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, wild, wild peated space side whiskey that, yeah. uh, 54.6%. So I just, I thought it was pretty approachable, which is dangerous. It is. Yeah. It's definitely, it, it's zesty and it's lively on the palate, but it's not, it's not overly aggressive in, in any way. So I'm going to add just a little tiny drop of water to what's left in here. Tom, if it isn't too much trouble, do you, do you mind just uh, in the chat, just put of the whiskeys that we taste? I'll go through, I'll do a, a quick rundown of the what, recap of what we tasted today, but maybe just in a quick line of which ones, the cash numbers that are going to be in the bundle. Uh, but again, you guys, you, you know, you're the first ones to know about these whiskeys coming out tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we'll send the email out with the full breakdown at 1 p.m. So obviously just be ready that time, but yeah. we'll put the bundle and you know, we don't think that'll sell or move as quickly, but uh, it, it, it very well could. So yeah, we're going to send the email. Um, you'll, it, these will all go live at one o'clock. So just um, one little tip of advice is just be sure that you're logged into your account and, you know, ready to kind of, you know, add these to your cart. Um, you can also, you can also call us on the phone. If you're not able to do it online, you're definitely more than welcome to give us a call and we're happy to help you over the phone. Um, but if you're doing it online, just make sure that prior to one o'clock Eastern time, you are logged into your account. Yeah. And seeing a couple of questions, uh, just, uh, just again, uh, regarding the outturn. So tomorrow there will be 20 different casts being released, which is our single, single largest outturn uh, released ever here in the U S which is crazy to think about, but you know, a lot of this is just a response to you. I mean, it, yeah. I mean you, Jenna one, yes, but everybody else, all of you kind of tune in because I think the increased enthusiasm from our members in the U S uh, has, has merited it. So we really working behind the scenes to get the whiskey out there so you can enjoy it while you're confined to your own home. Uh, I don't know, a little beacon of hope and, and light and joy, I think in this kind of unique time, but um, yeah. So 20, 20 coming out tomorrow, 1 PM Eastern, uh, you can you can you know order online by logging into your accounts. You can also give us a call. Jenna is would be one of our team members on the phones. We usually all are. Uh, we recently added an online chat feature. If you go to smwusa.com, you can now chat with us uh, during business hours. And uh, so tomorrow I'm going to be on on the end of the chat. So we're all part of the team. Our whole team yeah. is all engaging. And so we understand and, and just set the expectation. The phones would be flooded. You know, we're gonna be we're always answering calls nonstop, nonstop during outturn release day. Uh, so we're you know we'll we'll try to keep it quick so we can answer as many as we can. But uh, ordering online, if you can just log in your account and do it that way too. If you know what you'd like or if you're interested in any of these, it's probably a, a safer bet. But uh, I, I would just suggest you know moving pretty promptly because uh, you guys here tonight are the first ones to to know these whiskeys and you know take that information and use it <laughs> if you're interested. You know, be the first to, to take action. So anyway. There was a question about um, Pickly Do asked if there were any grain whiskeys coming out tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we don't have all, all the others in front of us, but I, I will say that we actually have two pretty oh. exciting single grain whiskeys um, of both really significant age, it looks like here, 27 and 31 years old. We're not going to reveal everything now, but but for you guys here, uh, we're going to have everything. We're going to have a, a proper sherry bomb, as it's called. You know, a really so, sort of hearty, deep, rich, and dried fruit sherry bomb. We're going to have more peat. We're going to have uh, this is the, the we had one isla tonight. We're not that's not the only isla we're going to have. We're going to have more coming out there. It's this is really we oh we have wow we we'll have everything from PX sherry casks to rum casks, which yeah. is not something we haven't seen. You know, the first time. Maybe the first, time, the first time in a while we've had a whiskey finished in a rum cask. That's really exciting. Uh, red wine barriques. We have at Salt Turn. We have more French oak. We got all these first fill barrels. Uh, refill sherry butts. Okay, so anyway, I'm, I'm naming all the types of wood. <laughs> we, you know, we have really put forward everything. Uh, it's a really exciting month, and yeah. so uh, that's uh, that's coming tomorrow at 1 p.m. So quick, quick run through of what we did tonight. You want to yeah. do it? I'll I'll introduce him. Maybe just kind of to give it your own little recap of what it was, what it was like. So, first one, twelve point three. Get it closer to the camera. Twelve point three three. Yeah, there you go. 
the most fun with your clothes on. There it is. It's number one. Look at that beautiful label. So yeah, uh, I loved this one. I mean, this is I love it. Barrel. really surprising. Very surprising. Very, very robust on the palate. Very just flavor dead on yeah. that one. Yeah. Full, full flavor on that one. Full flavor. Um, and that one I should mention too, that was priced at $95 for the first one. So next one up is, we tasted, which was 48.110 suit turn. Is that blurry? I, I feel like it's blurry. Nope, it's perfect. Okay, 15 year old space side that has been matured in ex bourbon hogshead for 13 years and then two years in a first fill French oak uh, sautern barrique uh, sweet fruity mel pr profile. What do you think of this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, yeah, all right. That's sometimes less is more when it comes to it. <laughs> yeah, called out for uh, saying too much. So then we moved on to this one here. 39 point, what is it? 39 point 39 one eight seven. Seven. Play on the tongue duality. I have to say that that spicy and dry flavor profile has been the most, I think, surprising for me. The, the few that I've had in the past few months have just really kind of surprised me. Yeah. And kind of given me an experience that I'm not used to and given me a, a flavor experience that I haven't had, you know, a lot in the past. So that is that's like one of our kind of sleeper flavor profiles that I think, you know, there are some real gems in in that flavor profile. So I really liked that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we described that as one that's sort of like a whiskey drinker's whiskey. It's not yeah. the most if you're sort of newer to whiskey or single cast whiskey, it's probably. I don't want to say it's 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 harder to love, but it's just uh, it's just think, different. It's different, and I think if you if you, I appreciate it for reasons that I probably didn't wouldn't have appreciated you know a while back before yeah. I was really into whiskey. Uh, I agree. That's not to say that it can't be enjoyed by anybody, but I think it's just it's more earthy and 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 sort of raw. And then we have this one here, ten point one eight three Velociraptor versus Xenomorph. 14 year old Isla in a refill sherry butt at 61.1%. Um, I'm also, I just violated what I what I said I would do, which is disclose the pricing on each one. Uh, we started with 95 and then we went <laughs> to 115, right? And, and forgive me, I'm getting all excited with these whiskeys here. Uh, and then number three, the one we just had was 115. This one is 145 a bottle starting tomorrow. So I love the name on that. I do too, yeah. Clash of two of two yeah. times. I think I need to watch Jurassic Park tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Alien too. I mean, I'm yeah. not. I've not seen those. I gotta. I gotta do that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So number five, a nice little surprise to you. One hundred eight point one nine. Forget convention. Can you see that there? Uh, yep. Seven year old peated space side whiskey, which is uh, pretty pretty remarkable. Or a, a big surprise. Sixty four point six percent ABV which was just so much in there. And that was priced at 95. So uh, yeah, I think that's a good, a good, a good selection. That was a very just flavor packed out from preview tasting. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all different flavors. I think across no, no two were similar. No, not at all. Like um, completely very different experiences with each one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll save this for, so Jen and I will be coming back on Friday, join with our colleague Zach for a, kind of a special live stream for, for kind of whiskey lovers who are not are new to the Scottish Whiskey Society, not yet members. Uh, but in addition to our 20 bottles in our outturn tomorrow, we will also have brand new uh, membership bottle bundles, which essentially if you're not a member, you want to join, you can order a membership for $99, or you can pair a membership with one of three predetermined bottles of whiskey. and kind of at a special price or a discounted yeah. price essentially um tomorrow i'm really excited the three bottles that will be offering to new members as well and if you're a current member and you have a friend that suck at home you want to share the love you can also send them as a gift send them a bottle with the membership uh, those will be coming up later and then i think on friday Jenna, we'll, we'll dive into those a little bit more yes we'll definitely do that around. yeah and there are three very unique and fun whiskeys in in those bundles. So yeah, yeah. Um, we'll kind of get nerdy with those on Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we got a lot. So Karen says, can the member get the new member bundles? You unfortunately, Karen, they're actually for, for new members because we have so many whiskeys and we have to allocate them to certain ways. Uh, they're reserved. These ones are for new, for new members. 
um, we can work something out if you want to give us a call which you want to send a gift membership to a friend or something um, and get the bottle we can figure something out but ideally they're for, they're for gift for current members who want to gift bottles to to friends or family members it's there for or if you're a member you yeah. your first member yourself uh, you can join with one of these but and but I, we got so many we got 20 other whiskeys coming tomorrow that are all you know, right. Particular. And to, to touch on um, Kelvin, who's actually here in California yeah, hey, and is an amazing member. So hi, Kelvin. It's nice to see you here. <laughs> um, he did ask if we were going to be releasing anything from the festival kind of yeah, events that were, were happening over in Scotland that have unfortunately been canceled. So yeah, so I, I would say stay tuned. In a few days, we're going to have um, all the details. But I, I will we'll just go ahead and say that, uh, you know, May is festival month in Scotland, so all the different regions now, I mean, including now Highland regions doing their own festivals uh, with their current member of bottlings. You know, distilleries tend to do these. Uh, the Scotland Whiskey Society has been unique in that we've been one of the few or at least original independent bottler, non-distilling, you know, whiskey company that also offers exclusive sort of celebratory bottlings to the festivals. The festivals have been canceled this year, and so we had all these amazing casts picked out, <laughs> bottled with our special labels, and their decision was do we not do anything with these or do we offer them anyway? And so we decided to go ahead and release uh, our festival bottlings, even though the festivals aren't happening, the celebration will just have to happen, you know, virtually like this. Yes. So we'll, on this end of this week, we'll be sending out some more information about all the festival bottlings and what to expect, but it's, uh, th that's going to be later on in the month. So. All right. Well, so, yeah. and then John asked, well, the current, bottles with membership be going away. So our current member bundles, will those bottles get sent to the shop or are those, what's gonna happen with those? Uh, cur current membership bottles that are right there right now, um, we've actually gone ahead, we, we've made those available just just preparing for the, the arrival of the new ones tomorrow. Uh, for current members, if, you, if you're interested in any of those, you're welcome to order those as well. Those are now in our online shop at smwsa.com. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, so yes, you, th those were, will be available. And I should mention okay. too, then, that's the, all the old labels, like the, generally like the ones behind you, yes. all that design is now the last of its kind. So it's yes. the end of well, closing of one chapter, beginning of a new one. And this is was one of the member bundles that is now available in the shop. And this has been such a beautiful whiskey. As you can see, it's this Blondie Bombshell, so 95.32 at 66%. Doesn't drink like 66%. It's absolutely beautiful. So um, if you've been kind of eyeing this, now's your, your time to go grab that. So. All right. All right. Well, well thank you. thanks. Yeah. Thanks for doing that with us, guys. I really yeah. appreciate you tuning in and all the enthusiasm. We'll keep doing these and uh, we don't want to give away everything, but but we have a really exciting series of different streams with some really special guests. Um, I, Jenna, I know you're excited. Jenna's been leading this, <laughs> this cool initiative that I think is gonna be amazing for all of us. Uh, so stay tuned on that. So anyway, we got a lot going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> this will be a big month. And I think yeah. if you remember, you're gonna really start seeing these cool things going on. Uh, it'll be a little, uh, as I mentioned, a little source of joy in, in this unusual lockdown, so. Um, all right. Yeah, so stay tuned for all that fun stuff. And thank you guys so much for being here. And I guess we'll see you all tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern time all right. for the big out turn. So, all right. Oh, I don't have a whiskey. Scotch it. Cheers. Slanja. <laughs>